Well, this fall, students, parents, and school districts were challenged to come up with the safest way for kids to learn. Online remote learning was the running theme. I caught up with a local family and a teacher to find out how the first quarter went for them. Mom, can you come to check my words? It's a scene that mirrors many homes across the U.S. Beginning the school year with online remote learning. Cassie Steinzel has four children in school this year. A freshman in high school, a sixth grader, first grader, and one in pre-K. It took us a while to get in the groove. I don't say this lightly when I honestly say I was in tears that first week. Yeah, you need to hear that. Good job. Six-year-old Tori says she likes school at home, but admits she misses her friends. Usually are comfortable with all my friends in just one class. At the beginning of the semester, her kids were in a classroom every Tuesday and Thursday till around noon. On the other days, they're home doing schoolwork that Cassie says would sometimes take into the evening. To get everybody's everything done by 6.30 is difficult, but if we do not have that rule, <laughs> then we're all stressed out and grouchy. Cassie works at Adams School where three of her children attend. Her husband has a full-time job and on his lunch break picks up their oldest daughter, AJ, from Marion High School. Trying to adjust their schedules has been hard. It's at no fault to teachers. Everybody's wonderful and everybody's doing the best they can, but it is a lot of pressure on these kids. But it's also a lot of pressure on the educators. Good morning, guys. Carbondale teacher Cassandra McGee says there's always a problem when dealing with technology. <laughs> McGee is a fourth grade teacher at Lewis School, and she never imagined her first year of teaching like this. She started the fall semester teaching fully remote with a clock in time for class at 8.30. Every morning she showed up to an empty classroom, a room her 22 students had never seen in person. I feel like they've gotten a better hang of it. Um, we still have issues, but it's not, it's no one's fault. It's, it's always a technology issue. She uses a program called Google Classroom. While preparing during the summer, her goal was to navigate through the programs with confidence so she could help her students do the same. And I say constantly to my parents, parents and my students, I'm like, we're in this together. It's okay, we're going to have some hiccups. McGee is also a mother of three boys, so she understands the pressure from both sides. I think with me being a parent, uh, having to deal with remote learners, I, I kind of empathize with the parents. And when her and the other teachers do get frustrated, she's grateful they have each other to lean on. Now into the second quarter, some of her students are finally in the classroom with her, but she has a message for those students who remain home. If I don't get to see, you know, some students who remain fully remote, I will definitely pay a home visit. Both Cassandra and Cassie say they just want to make it through remote learning successfully with no learning lost and they both look forward to things going back to normal. I think it's just a whole new world and everybody's doing the best they can navigating it all. Yes, they are. Well, again, we're into the second quarter and there's been some changes. McGee now sees about eight of her students in person four days a week with full remote on Wednesdays. Cassie's children are now going to school Monday through Thursday, half days, and are full remote on Fridays.